Welcome to True Crime Case Files, the podcast that delves into the darkest corners of human nature. In today's episode, we uncover the shocking truth behind a murder that sent shockwaves through the affluent neighborhoods of Charleston, South Carolina in September of 1998. Join us as we unravel the chilling plot orchestrated by a mother-in-law and the devastating consequences that followed. Our victim, Vicki Davis Goderby, was a 28-year-old marketing executive. She possessed a quick wit and a magnetic personality, which drew people to her effortlessly. Vicky's ambition was evident in her dedication to her career, often working late hours to climb the corporate ladder. Despite her professional success, her personal life remained shrouded in secrecy. The classic Southern rumor mill of Charleston, South Carolina swirled about Vicky's alleged sexual involvement with multiple men, including a married man and even a high school student. These rumors, fueled by local chatter at church and iced tea socials, painted a complex picture of a woman entangled in a web of sex and illicit affairs. The gossipy frenzy surrounding her personal life only intensified the intrigue surrounding Vicky. September of 1998 was a tumultuous time in Charleston. The city was still reeling from the aftermath of Hurricane Bonnie, which had struck the region just weeks prior. The hurricane had caused widespread damage leaving many residents displaced and struggling to rebuild their lives. Against this backdrop of recovery and resilience, the shocking murder of Vicki Davis Goderby unfolded. As we delve deeper into this case, we will explore the lives of those connected to Vicki, including her husband and mother-in-law, both of who would play a central role in the chilling plot that unfolded. We will examine the evidence, witnesses, and motives behind this heinous crime. Join us as we navigate the twists and turns of this true crime tale that gripped the community of Charleston, South Carolina. On a fateful day in September 1998, a peaceful and affluent neighborhood of Charleston, South Carolina was shattered by a heinous crime that would forever haunt its residents. The victim, Vicki Davis Goderby, a 28-year-old marketing executive, met a tragic end in her own bedroom, the scene of a brutal act of violence that sent shockwaves through the community. Vicky was a woman of ambition, known for her quick wit and magnetic personality. Her dedication to her career was unwavering, often working late hours to climb the corporate ladder. However, behind her professional success, there were whispers of a controversial sex life that added a layer of intrigue to the case. Rumors circulated about Vicky's alleged involvement with multiple men, including a married individual and even a high school student. These whispers fueled speculation and cast a shadow over her reputation. The discovery of Vicky's lifeless body sent shockwaves through the affluent neighborhood. The crime scene was a chilling sight, with bloodstains and signs of a violent struggle. The murder weapon, a baseball bat, added a horrifying twist to the already perplexing case. The residents, accustomed to a life of comfort and security, were left in a state of disbelief. News of the murder spread like wildfire, capturing the attention of the local media. The community, once shielded by its genteel classically Southern affluence, found itself thrust into the spotlight as the investigation unfolded. September 1998 became a month etched in the memories of Charleston's residents. The murder of Vicki Davis Goderby had shattered their sense of security, forcing them to confront the darkness that lurked beneath the surface. It was a crime that demanded answers, and the community rallied together, determined to find justice for Vicky. A quiet neighborhood of Charleston, South Carolina was shattered by the gruesome murder of 28-year-old marketing executive Vicky Davis Goderby in September of 1998. The police, led by the tenacious detective Sean, trash talk, really, wasted no time in their pursuit of justice. Upon arriving at the crime scene, the investigators were met with a chilling sight. Vicky's bedroom once a place of comfort and solace, had been transformed into a scene of unspeakable violence. Blood splatters adorned the walls, starkly contrasting with the elegant decor that surrounded them. The air was heavy with a sense of dread as the investigators began their meticulous examination. The murder weapon, a baseball bat adorned with the logo of the Florida Marlins, lay discarded near Vicky's lifeless body. Its wooden surface was stained with her blood, a grim reminder of the brutality she had endured. Detective really carefully collected the bat, hoping it would provide crucial clues to unravel this heinous crime. As the investigation unfolded, the police discovered that Vicky's personal life was far from ordinary. 
Rumors had swirled about her involvement with multiple men, including a married man and even a high school student. These revelations added a layer of complexity to the case, leaving the investigators to question whether her sex life played a role in her tragic demise. Detective Reilly and his team meticulously combed through Vicky's personal belongings, searching for any evidence that could shed light on her murder. They meticulously examined her phone records, revealing a series of cryptic messages and calls from unknown numbers. The investigators reached out to the phone company, hoping to trace the origins of these mysterious communications. Meanwhile, local media outlets began to take notice of the high-profile case. The community was gripped by fear with residents locking their doors and looking over their shoulders, unsure if the killer lurked among them. As the investigation continued, Detective Reilly and his team tirelessly pursued every lead, determined to bring justice to Vicky and her grieving family. Their efforts would uncover a web of deceit, betrayal, and secrets that would shock the community to its core. Evelyn Traylene Goderby, a 63-year-old woman of Southern charm and impeccable manners, found herself at the center of the investigation into Vicki Davis Goderby's murder. Evelyn, known for her old money background and esteemed reputation, had always presented herself as a pillar of the community. However, beneath her polished exterior, a deep-seated resentment towards her daughter-in-law simmered. The motive for Evelyn's potential involvement in the crime stemmed from her concern for the family's legacy. Vicky's decision not to have children was seen as a threat to the Goderby name a name that had long been associated with wealth and influence in Charleston, South Carolina. The tension between the two women had been building for months, with Evelyn feeling increasingly marginalized by Vicky's success and independence. As the police interrogated Evelyn, her emotions swung from anger to denial. She vehemently refuted any involvement in the murder, insisting that she had no reason to harm Vicky. However, the mounting evidence against her was difficult to ignore. Detective Sean, Trash Talk, really, the lead investigator on the case, meticulously pieced together the puzzle. He discovered that Evelyn, a baseball fan, had been in possession of a baseball bat similar to the murder weapon. This discovery raised suspicions and pointed towards Evelyn's possible guilt. Furthermore, really uncovered a series of anonymous letters sent to Vicky in the months leading up to her death. These letters contained veiled threats and warnings suggesting that someone close to her had ill intentions. Handwriting analysis revealed similarities between the anonymous letters and Evelyn's own penmanship. The investigation took a dramatic turn when a neighbor recalled seeing Evelyn's convertible parked near Vicky's house on the day of the murder. This eyewitness account provided a crucial link between Evelyn and the crime scene. As the evidence stacked against her, Evelyn's facade of Southern charm began to crumble. The affluent neighborhoods of Charleston were left in a state of shock, grappling with the realization that darkness can lurk even within the most seemingly idyllic communities. As the investigation into the murder of Vicki Davis Goderby unfolded, the spotlight turned towards her husband, Greg Goderby, a successful patent lawyer. Greg, known for his charm and ambition, had always been deeply devoted to his family's reputation. However, the police began to uncover disturbing details that raised questions about his involvement in this heinous crime. One key point of contention was Vicky's decision not to have children. This had been a source of frequent arguments between the couple, leading investigators to explore whether it played a role in the motive behind the murder. The pressure to carry on the family legacy weighed heavily on Greg's shoulders, and it became evident that he saw Vicky's choice as a threat to their future. During the intense police interrogation, Greg's emotions ran high. His responses ranged from anger to defensiveness as he vehemently denied any involvement in his wife's murder. He insisted that he loved Vicky deeply and would never harm her. However, the detectives were not convinced and continued to dig deeper. One crucial piece of evidence that emerged was a series of text messages between Greg and an unidentified woman. These messages vaguely hinted at a secret affair, throwing a new twist into the investigation. The detectives painstakingly analyzed the messages, searching for any clues that could shed light on the motive behind Vicky's murder. Later, the case took a dramatic turn when a new witness came forward. A neighbor reported seeing a suspicious figure lurking near Vicky's house on the night of the murder. This crucial eyewitness account provided a glimmer of hope for the investigators as it offered a potential break in the case. As the investigation continued, 
The detectives worked tirelessly to gather enough evidence to bring the killer to justice. The truth behind Vicky's murder remained elusive, but the pieces of the puzzle were slowly falling into place. The investigation into the murder of Vicky Davis Goderby took an unexpected turn when a crucial piece of evidence was unearthed. On a humid and sultry September afternoon, a beachcomber stumbled upon a hidden compartment concealed within a weathered wooden chest buried deep in the sand. To the beachcomber's surprise, the compartment contained a worn diary belonging to the late marketing executive. This diary, which had remained concealed for over two weeks, would prove to be a treasure trove of secrets and revelations. As the pages were carefully turned, the shocking truth unfolded before the eyes of the investigators. Vicky's diary chronicled a clandestine world of secret liaisons and forbidden desires, exposing a web of a dozen men Vicky was having sex with at the time of her death. The entries in the diary depicted a life far removed from the polished facade Vicky had presented to the world. Names were mentioned, many of them recognizable figures from the local community. The diary hinted at a married man, a deacon of a local megachurch, a high school student, several men at the local senior center, and even a prominent politician who had been a frequent visitor to the affluent neighborhoods of Charleston, South Carolina. The investigators were astounded by the breadth and audacity of Vicky's secret life. The diary entries painted a vivid picture of a woman who reveled in the thrill of forbidden relationships and outré sexual acts, seemingly unconcerned with the potential consequences. The revelations sent shockwaves through the community, with whispers and speculation spreading like wildfire. As the investigation continued, the police found themselves faced with a daunting task. The diary had opened up a multitude of new leads and suspects, each with their own potential motive for wanting Vicky silenced. The investigators meticulously combed through the diary's pages, cross-referencing names and dates with their existing evidence. The investigators knew that they were now on the brink of unraveling the truth, but little did they know the twists and turns that still lay ahead. In the gripping investigation into the murder of Vicky Davis Goderby, a shocking twist emerged that sent shockwaves through the affluent neighborhoods of Charleston, South Carolina in September of 1998. As the police dug deeper into the case, a new suspect emerged, casting doubt on the initial focus of the investigation. Amber Smythe, Vicky's envious secretary, became a person of interest due to her simmering resentment and a trail of secrets that led investigators down a twisted path. Amber, known for her sharp tongue and ruthless ambition, had long harbored jealousy towards Vicky's success and glamorous lifestyle. The police, determined to uncover the truth, delved into Amber's possible motives for murder. During the intense interrogation, Amber's anger and resentment towards Vicky were palpable. However, she vehemently denied any involvement in the crime. As the investigators pressed further, a startling revelation came to light. It was discovered that Amber, under the alias Vanessa Dracula, had been working as a call girl to make ends meet. This was not an uncommon choice. According to the American Center for Family Relationships, 40% of women in their 20s have turned to sex work for extra money. Even more shocking, one of her regular clients was none other than Greg Goderby. Vicky's husband. According to Amber, Greg was looking to have a child with her, then he would adopt the child to be his heir. This revelation sent shockwaves through the investigation. The police began to question the nature of Greg and Amber's relationship and whether it played a role in Vicky's untimely demise. Was Greg's involvement with Amber a motive for murder? Did Amber's jealousy and rage push her to commit such a heinous act? The police meticulously combed through phone records and interviewed witnesses, hoping to uncover the truth. They sought to piece together the puzzle of Vicky's secret sex life, her relationship with Greg, and the possible involvement of Amber. The case took on a life of its own, captivating the public's imagination and leaving them hungry for answers. In a shocking twist, the true identity of the murderer in the high-profile Charleston murder case was revealed. Evelyn Traylene Goderby the unsuspecting mother-in-law of the victim, Vicki Davis Goderby, was arrested and charged with the brutal killing. This stunning revelation sent shockwaves through the community and left many questioning how such a tragic event could have unfolded. The motive behind this heinous act was uncovered during the course of the investigation. It appeared that Evelyn, driven by a toxic combination of jealousy, confusion and pride for her son Greg, hatched a twisted plan to protect her family's reputation at all costs. 
On that fateful day in September of 1998, Evelyn, suffering from undiagnosed dementia, mistook Vicky for Amber Smythe, Vicky's secretary, part-time call girl, and her son's lover. In a moment of confusion and rage, Evelyn unleashed a brutal attack on Vicky, beating her to death with a Florida Marlins baseball bat. Sadly, this situation is not at all uncommon. According to the American Academy of Medicine and Criminal Justice, 18% of all murders in the U.S. are committed by someone with dementia. This tragic case of mistaken identity left investigators and the community reeling with disbelief. As news of Evelyn's arrest spread, the community was left grappling with a mix of relief and disbelief. The Goderby family, once regarded as pillars of the community, now finds themselves at the center of a scandal that has tarnished their reputation. The highly anticipated trial of Evelyn Traylene Goderby, the prime suspect in the murder of Vicki Davis Goderby, captivated the city of Charleston in October of 1999. District Attorney Lars Constable led the prosecution, while defense attorney Harry Huxtable fought to cast doubt on the evidence. The courtroom was packed with spectators, eager to witness the unfolding drama. The prosecution presented a compelling case against Evelyn, meticulously outlining the evidence that pointed to her guilt. They showcased the blood-stained baseball bat, the murder weapon that was found near the crime scene. Expert witnesses testified about the DNA analysis that linked Evelyn to the bat. The jury listened intently as the prosecution painted a vivid picture of a calculated and premeditated murder. The defense, on the other hand, sought to create doubt in the minds of the jurors. They questioned the reliability of the DNA evidence, suggesting that it could have been contaminated or mishandled. They also called witnesses who testified to Evelyn's character, painting her as a loving and caring mother who would never commit such a heinous act. The defense argued that the real killer was still at large and that Evelyn was being wrongfully accused. Throughout the trial, the victim's family sat in the courtroom, their emotions palpable. They endured the painful process of reliving their loss, as the details of Vicky's brutal murder were recounted. The family's grief was compounded by the shocking revelation that the murder was a case of mistaken identity. Evelyn, suffering from dementia, had tragically killed Vicky, mistaking her for Amber Smythe, her son's lover. As the trial reached its climax, the jury retired to deliberate. The city held its breath, awaiting their decision. After hours of deliberation, the jury returned with a guilty verdict. The courtroom erupted in a mix of emotions, with some expressing relief that justice had been served, while others questioned whether the death penalty was the appropriate punishment. In the end, the trial of Evelyn Goderby served as a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the devastating consequences of unchecked emotions. It left the city grappling with questions of justice and the complexities of the human psyche. In the aftermath of the trial, the lives of all those involved took unexpected turns. Evelyn Traylene Goderby, now incarcerated at the Charleston Correctional Facility, grappled with the consequences of her actions. The once prestigious Goderby family, known for their old money Southern charm, was now tarnished by the dark cloud of murder. Their mansion, a symbol of wealth and privilege, stood empty and abandoned, a stark reminder of the tragedy that unfolded within its walls. Greg Goderby, burdened by the weight of his mother's crimes, sought solace in therapy to confront his own demons. He struggled to come to terms with the fact that his own mother had taken the life of his wife, Vicki Davis Goderby. Greg, once a successful patent lawyer, found his career in shambles as his reputation became entangled with the scandal surrounding his family. He sought refuge in the arms of Amber Smythe, Vicky's former secretary and his secret lover. The two eventually married, had three children, and settled into a modest home in Helena, Montana, far removed from the southern opulence they once knew. The victim's family, devastated by the loss of their beloved Vicky, slowly began to rebuild their shattered lives. They found solace in the support of their community, who rallied around them during their darkest days. The local church held a memorial service in Vicky's honor, where friends and family gathered to share stories and memories of the vibrant young woman whose life was tragically cut short. The investigation and subsequent trial had left an indelible mark on the community of Charleston. The case had captivated the attention of the media, with newspapers and television stations covering every twist and turn of the trial. The local news station, WCBD Channel 2, 
dedicated a nightly segment to the trial, providing updates on the proceedings and interviews with key players in the case. The trial became the talk of the town, with residents discussing the latest developments over cups of coffee at the local diner, Joe's Cafe. As the years passed, the memory of Vicki Davis Goderby began to fade. The Charleston Correctional Facility, once a hub of activity during the trial, returned to its normal routine. The Goderby Mansion, now a mere relic of the past, stood as a reminder of the darkness that can lurk behind closed doors. As we conclude this episode of True Crime Case Files, we reflect on the chilling plot that unfolded behind closed doors. The tragic murder of Vicki Davis Goderby revealed a tangled web of secrets and lies, leaving no one untouched by its devastating consequences. In a shocking twist, the truth behind Vicky's death unveiled a case of mistaken identity, driven by a combination of jealousy, pride, and the tragic effects of dementia. This case serves as a haunting reminder of the depths to which human nature can descend and the lasting impact it leaves on the lives of those involved. Hey, true crime case solvers, interested in more real-life murder mysteries? Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And do you have any thoughts about this case or have a case of your own you'd like us to investigate? Leave us a comment. Until then, stay safe true crime case solvers.